Hello, and welcome once again to Lato's Law. I'm Steve Lato, attorney at law in the state of Michigan. I've been practicing law for 25 years in the fields of consumer protection and lemon law. I often write about this stuff for places like roadandtrack.com, and I've written a few books along the way, including the Lemon Law Bible. So here we're going to talk about why you should take the VWTDI settlement and be happy. <laughs> I get a lot of people asking me specifically about the VW uh, clean diesel case and whether they should be happy with the settlement, whether they should take it, whether they should hire an attorney, whether they should fight it. And uh, I'm sure by now you know about this, but in case you don't, uh, Volkswagen a while back uh, launched a car in America that said uh, it had clean diesel. It had a diesel engine, but it ran really clean. And uh, people bought it thinking they were doing good things for the environment. And of course, it turned out later that the diesel had a defeat device in it. That is a, a computer program thingy which, uh, by the way, that's a technical term, thingy, which allowed it to pass emissions tests and then go out on the road and just pollute. And people were curious for a long time, how did VW build such a clean engine? Well, it turns out they didn't because the device allowed the uh, car to pass emissions tests, but then pollute at a rate about 40 times what was allowed by law. <laughs> Not four times, 40 times. So uh, in all, there's about 475,000 affected cars and uh, a bunch of things happened to Volkswagen, kind of like a ton of bricks falling on them. The government came after them, a couple states went after them, as you might expect California did, and then of course a bunch of plaintiffs' attorneys filed lawsuits, so you have class action lawsuits, federal actions, the EPA and other organizations and entities, and all of this stuff wound up in a courtroom in California. And a while back now, VW announced a goodwill package right off the bat, he said, hey, there's about half a million people in America affected by this. And just to keep you happy, we're going to give you two $500 gift cards. One is a prepaid Visa card. You can use it on anything you want. And one is a VW dealer card. You can spend it at the dealer on anything you want. And uh, while many of these kinds of gift cards don't seem like such a great deal, uh, you know, you can get oil changes and tune-ups, things like that with the VW uh, dealer card. And I know that there are people out there who are complaining because they said if you read the fine print of the dealer cards which, and the gift cards, I think they were a Visa. And the Visa cards always come with pages and pages and pages of disclaimers. And buried amongst the disclaimers was use of this card is the acceptance of our terms. And one of our terms is anything you, know, you want to dispute with us, you have to arbitrate. And so I actually saw some attorneys out there saying, you know, you shouldn't use these gift cards because if you do, you're agreeing to arbitrate your claim against VW. And of course, that comes from a very, very bad reading of the uh, terms and conditions because it says you agree to arbitrate claims against us, and us there would be Visa. So uh, if you got these cards, I've already spoken about this. If you got the cards, you should use them and uh, you know get get, get while well, the getting's good because it's free money. And it turns out that that free money does not affect what's going to happen next with the VW court settlement, which was just approved this past week by that judge in California. So if you want information on this, I'll give the website out a couple times and also I'll put it in the information at the bottom if this is the YouTube video you're watching. But it's vwcourtsettlement.com or vwdieselinfo.com. And if you go there, you'll find out what you need to do if you've got one of these VW TDIs that's affected by the settlement. And uh, you'll find out how to get what you're entitled to. And frankly, what they're giving you is exactly what you're entitled to and probably more. So my advice to you is take the money and run and be happy. So first of all, what they announced, and again, this is on top of what they already gave people with the $1,000 in value on those two gift cards. So uh, hopefully you got that already. So when you're thinking about whether or not you're getting a good deal, factor that into the equation. You know, did, did, does this seem like a good deal when you think $1,000 in value there plus what we're getting here? And what VW announced, and frankly, I had people ask me this. They said, Steve, do you think VW is going to be forced to buy back all those cars? And I actually said no. I didn't think they would be. And, and the reason is this. A lot of these class action type settlements often resolve themselves where they say, well, you know something, they'll put up a big pool of money and we'll distribute it among the people in the pool and then we'll pay the attorneys a couple million dollars for their troubles. And by the time the dust settles, people get a little bit of money for their troubles. The attorneys make out like bandits. And people are kind of stuck on, well, yeah, but what now? You know, I mean, I've gotten a lot of those settlements. I got a coupon, you know, coupon good for this, coupon good for that. 
or you know, I get a check for $1.98 because it turns out that I bought a, a, a CD back in the 1990s and somebody had been price fixing. I mean, you know, so the notion that there's gonna be substantial justice here seems so far out of reach that I was telling people, no, I don't, I don't think they're gonna be required to do that. I'm gonna you know, stay tuned and find out what they're gonna do, but quite frankly, I can't imagine that'll be the case. Well, guess what? <laughs> I was wrong. VW has agreed to buy back every one of these cheating cars. If you want them to buy it back from you, they'll buy it back from you. Now, here's the thing. If the buyback was being done under the Lemon Law, there would be a particular formula under which it would be calculated, and the formula would change from state to state. I had many people contact me and say, Steve, I've got one of these cars. Does it qualify as a lemon? And I would have to explain to them and say, under Michigan law, no, not unless you brought it in four times, first time in the first year, and they failed to fix it. And here's the thing. If people had known that this problem existed, they could have brought their vehicle in, demanded it be fixed. The dealer would have said, we don't have a fix for it. You bring it back four times, and boom, it's a lemon, and then you can go through the buyback process. I have yet to speak to anyone who brought their vehicle in more than once for this. In fact, I've never met anybody who brought it in at all. Because when people heard there was no fix, they didn't bother bringing them in. And I told people, I said, by the way, if you bought one of these things, and it fits this criteria, you can get it bought back under the Lemon Law. Okay? So a lot of people say, well, Steve, since they're buying these vehicles back, shouldn't they do it the way they would do it under the Lemon Law? Eh, you know, I can see the argument, but the problem is that part of the Lemon Law... Uh, the reason behind it is it's compensating you for the pain and hassle. <laughs> I avoid sitting pain in the you know what there. The pain and the hassle of having a car that breaks down, it strands you, it's unreliable. You take it to the dealership, you sit there for a day or two, you, you don't have your car for a few days, you gotta you know, bum ride some people. From my understanding, if you had one of these cheating VW TDI diesels, it didn't change your life any. Unless, of course, you lived in one of those weird communities out west where strangers would come up and write nasty notes and put it on your windshield saying, I can't believe you bought one of these polluting devices. Um, when nobody knew that. But I digress. The point is that the Lemon Law really doesn't fit here. Um, I mean, I, I understand that it could have, but again, things that could have happened didn't happen, right? So the question is then, what would be fair? And you have to understand something. And unfortunately, too many people in our society think, oh, I've got a lawsuit. I will now be rich. Lawsuits and the legal system aren't designed to make you rich. They're designed to make you whole. W-H-O-L-E. Designed to make you whole, to make you complete, to put you back to where you'd be if you hadn't been harmed. So if you ask yourself in an honest discussion, arm's length transaction, what would it have taken to make you whole the moment you found out that your VW TDI diesel was cheating on its admissions? Well, what would make you whole at that point in time is if somebody would walk up to you and say, you know something, I'll give you what the car is worth right now if it wasn't cheating on its emissions. And that is exactly what VW has agreed to do, the 475,000 cars on the road, if those people who own them want them to, they will buy those cars back at the trade-in value that they had before the scandal broke, okay? So we're talking about the value the car had over a year ago. So here we are sitting in the year 2016. They will give you the trade-in value of your car based on 2015. So you're actually coming out ahead by one year of depreciation right off the bat, okay? So... That right there wouldn't have been a bad deal, but wait, there's more. And here's where it gets good. They're also going to compensate you cash. They're going to give you cash for your troubles. And the cash minimum payment is $5,100, up to $10,000 cash. So if you've got one of these vehicles and you owned it on the correct date, they are going to, if you want them to, buy your car back for what it was worth last year before the scandal broke and cut you a check for five to $10,000 depending which model of the car you've got. That is a heck of a deal. Like I said, grab the money and run and be happy. Now, here's the thing. There are people out there who say, no, this isn't fair. 
I bought this car. I want to keep this car. It's amazing. I meet people who have got defective cars and they go, I was hoping to keep this car for 20 years. I was hoping to pass it along to my children. <laughs> okay. Let's assume for a moment that that's remotely true. Well, Volkswagen has said for those people out there who actually want to keep their cheating diesel, they can. So, VW will also, for those people, fix your car and let you keep it. So, somewhere down the road, and again, they haven't got the fix for this one yet. That's the problem. But VW keeps insisting they're coming up with a fix, they'll have a fix, and when they come up with a fix, it will comply with federal and state guidelines and emission standards and pass tests and so on and so forth. So assuming that that's true, they've said, we will fix your car if you want us to, and you can keep the car, and we'll still give you the $5,100 to $10,000 cash for your troubles. So you're going to get $5,100 to $10,000 in cash for your troubles, along with getting your car fixed. So again, you've got nothing to complain about because number one, it hasn't affected you till now, except for in the theoretical trade-in value of your car. But if they fix your car, it resolves that issue. And if it doesn't resolve your issue, you still get $5,100 to $10,000 in cash for your troubles. Now, again, I know people out there are saying, Steve, I got a lawsuit. I want a billion dollars in a ham sandwich. I heard about a woman who used talcum powder and got $70 million last night in the news. And I say yes, and she convinced a jury she got cancer <laughs> from the talcum powder. But that's also something that probably get overturned on appeal. It'll certainly get reduced on appeal. But this is not the same thing. This car didn't give you cancer. This car pissed you off. It upset you. You felt like you were ripped off. But guess what? Volkswagen is now making you whole. They're going to either fix the car or buy it back from you and hand you a check for up to $10,000 in cash. That is a heck of a deal. That's why I advise you to take the money and run. Now, along with this, just in case you're curious, Volkswagen has also promised to invest almost $5 billion dollars in a couple different projects, including a project to reduce emissions in their fleet overall, and also to promote clean vehicles. And, you know, again, what that's going to amount to, I don't know, education programs, or maybe they'll do some more research on electric cars. Who knows? Okay. But the point is that Volkswagen actually came to the table and agreed to pay, and this is the, the cool thing, when you add it all up, 16 and a half billion dollars. Sixteen and a half billion dollars. And what I was amazed by, I was talking to my good friend Chris Goodsell in Australia, uh, who hosts a show down there that I'm on, believe it or not. His show is called Road Ramblings. And uh, I was talking to Chris about this, and I said, the amazing thing is when they announced the settlement, Volkswagen stock went up. <laughs> so they went to their stockholders and said, good news, guys, we're cutting a check for sixteen and a half billion dollars. And they said, yay! And you might say, Steve, that's counterintuitive. It's not because what the investors and stockholders have been worried about all these years is they were worried about how much it was going to cost Volkswagen. They knew it was going to cost them a lot of money, but what's a lot? And once they put a price tag on it and said, here it is, boom, we've capped the damages at $16.5 billion. Volkswagen apparently has got more than that money laying around, so it didn't hurt them in that sense. And it resolved the biggest question mark in the corporate entity that is Volkswagen. So Volkswagen is cutting a check for $16.5 billion. But what it means to you, the consumer, if you personally bought one of these TDI VWs, uh, VWs with a cheat and diesel and a defeat device on it, you will get that vehicle bought back if you want them to, or they will fix it and they'll hand you a check for $5,100 to $10,000 cash money, spend it any way you want. Now, I do have to point out, there were actually attorneys and people who showed up to complain and object to the settlement. And I actually thought to myself, interesting. I always like to see what the other side's going to say. You know, I mean, it, it might be crazy, but it might be entertaining. Who knows? And I went and looked, and of course, I saw some attorneys who were objecting, saying it wasn't enough money. Uh, and I also saw some attorneys saying, no, people should opt out of this and file individual lawsuits. And again, I've had people call my office. They say, hey, Steve, I want to sue VW myself. And I say, well, knock yourself out. I won't handle the case. There are attorneys out there who will. But the thing about this is, remember this, is that if you hire an attorney to sue Volkswagen and you succeed and get some money out of Volkswagen, 
you got to pay your attorneys. Your, your attorneys are going to get some money. Now, the attorneys did get some money out of this deal. Uh, the $16.5 billion check did include attorney fees, both for the private attorneys handling the class matter, as well as payments to states, attorneys general, and also dealerships who had representation there. But the point is that you can hire your own attorney and pursue this matter and hope you succeed and hope you get something, but you have to better your position here, even factoring in your attorney fees, otherwise it wasn't worth your time or trouble. And quite frankly, I don't see how it could be worth your time or trouble to pursue this matter with your own attorney, but if you want to, you can. But the judge, I believe, rightly pointed out after hearing all the complaints from the various attorneys who came in to say, hey, this deal's no good, to say, you know something, the objections you're making aren't that substantial, and actually, they're not that convincing. It just simply looks like you guys, that is the attorneys, want more money. And I will be forthright and tell you, I'm an attorney. You know that. I mention it occasionally. And I, I've done class actions. But I've also seen a lot of class actions, and I've seen class actions where the attorneys made out like bandits, and the class made out like losers. They got nothing, or almost nothing. They get a check for a buck ninety-eight. They get a coupon good for a free windshield wiper scraper or something, but they don't get anything worthwhile. Here, here, you're getting a check for five thousand one hundred to ten thousand dollars. You're getting your vehicle bought back or fixed, and VW is throwing another five, almost five billion dollars at the problem. Sounds like a good settlement to me. That's why I think you should take it and run. In case you're curious, this is not the largest corporate fine in history. Uh, in similar settlements, you'll recall a while back, a bunch of states got together and sued the cigarette industry uh, over the fact that for decades they had told people that smoking was good for you. And then uh, the states, of course, had to pay all the money when all these smokers got sick. And that settlement was $246 billion. So <laughs> substantially more, like 15 times more. I, I could do the math right now, but I'm a busy man. Plus the BP Gulf oil spill was a $53 billion settlement. And in fact, they're still doling that money out right now. $53 billion with a B dollar settlement over the BP Gulf oil spill. But getting back to the VW TDI cheat and diesel case, if you want more information, go to VWCourtSettlement.com or VWDieselInfo.com. They've got all the information there, what you need to do, because you do need to act on this. You gotta register, make an appointment, do all this stuff. Go there and find out VWCourtSettlement.com or VWDieselInfo.com. That's why I think you should take the VW TDI settlement and run, and like I said, be happy about it. This show, of course, is on the internet. It's on uh, uh, iTunes and it's on uh, YouTube. So if you've got questions or comments or ideas for stories, shoot them my way. LeitoisLaw.com is the best way. All my contact info is there. L-E-H-T-O-S-L-A-W.com. I'm on Twitter at Steve Leto at S-T-E-V-E-L-E-H-T-O. And this show is on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Podbean, Google Play, and YouTube. Probably more later on. Thanks for listening watching. Bye-bye.